Welcome to this demo on configuring application blueprints. A blueprint is an abstract model of an application. In this demo, we will show how to create a blueprint of a multi-tier, multi-node application. First, we will look at how an application blueprint enables the concept of design once and deploy anywhere. Then, we will look at the various components of an application blueprint. Application architects can use a drag and drop canvas to model an application blueprint. Logical templates, application components and scripts can be added to the blueprint. The order of installing components during a deployment is specified by creating dependency links. In this slide, we see that application services are abstracted from infrastructure services, which are themselves abstracted from resource pools. The power of abstracted service models is that you can treat a model the same irrespective of where the service gets deployed. You can model a service once and deploy it anywhere, whether it is a dev, test, a production environment, or whether it is a private or a public cloud. The mechanism of deploying the same application to multiple environments is explained more in the video on deployment profiles. Let's create a multi-tier application with a load balancer, JBoss application server, and a MySQL database. Note that the application is an abstract model. The components in this blueprint will be instantiated using the available components in the cloud. Now we'll add a VM template for the load balancer. Similarly, we'll add two more templates for the JBoss application server and the MySQL database. Now we'll add services from the catalog to each node in the blueprint. First, we'll add the Apache service to the load balancer. Similarly, we'll add a JBoss service to the app server and a MySQL service to the database node. Now that we have the server node set up, we'll add application components to the app server and the database node. Application components have to be compatible with the service they are dropped onto. So you cannot drop a SQL script on the JBoss service or drop a war file on the MySQL service. Let's drop a SQL script to the MySQL service. Similarly, let's drop a war file on the JBoss server. For scaling deployments, you might need to deploy multiple virtual machines or a cluster for a particular node and use a load balancer to manage them. In this blueprint, let's make the application server into a cluster. Dependencies are added in the blueprint to define an order in which the deployment tasks must be performed. Creating a dependency link from one item such as a service or an application component to another guarantees that the task of creating the first item finishes successfully before the second task begins. For example, because a load balancer usually cannot be configured until the application is up and running, let's add a dependency from the Apache service to the war file on the JBoss server. A blue dotted line appears and points to the dependent component. Similarly, we'll add a dependency from the war file to the SQL script in the database node. Now that we have all the components set up in the blueprint, let's look at some details. Property binding is a very important feature in blueprints. Binding to another property lets you customize a script based on the value of other nodes properties. In this example, the property HTTP node port is bound to the port number of the JBoss app server. So if the port number on the JBoss app server changes, the HTTP node port property in the scripts of the load balancer will receive the latest values. This is set by using the edit property dialog box by clicking the edit icon against each property. 
property for each service and component receive the value set during service creation if any if the catalog administrator who created the service has not not marked a property as not overridable the property values can be overridden at the time of creating the blueprint in this case the catalog administrator has not enabled this flag which says overridable at deployment the app architect can mark a property as not overridable if he doesn't want a value to be changed during deployment time this provides flexibility in setting property values and lets the best person in the chain make the decision on what's a good value for each property each component in the blueprint has multiple life cycle stages install configure start update roll back and tear down the service creator can define scripts for each life cycle stage if a script is present it will be executed by the deployment engine at the appropriate time the script of dependent components are executed first and the property values are passed on to the script of the depending component in most deployments some servers are deployed to a dmz zone and some servers are deployed to a network protected by a firewall in the clustered tugspang application the load balancer node is the only node that can be accessed from a public network the database and the app server must be deployed in the private network behind a firewall the load balancer node must also have access to the database and app server nodes to handle this situation we can define two nics on the load balancer each nic must specify a logical network name at deployment time the logical network is mapped to an actual cloud network when a virtual machine is created the number of nics for the virtual machine are derived from the node notice the disk tab of the database node in this blueprint this node has multiple disks configured flexible disk layout enhances the storage flexibility and lets you add additional disks to a node when creating an application blueprint the disks are created dynamically during provisioning and added to the node you can also manage placing the disks on different data sources once the user defines the flexible disk layout for nodes in the blueprint application deployer can further customize the deployment this blueprint contains an external service for the database node you can add basic or advanced external services to the blueprint these external services will have been installed separately from the application external services are commonly used because these services are not provisioned as part of the blueprint but the application needs the external service in order to work in part 2 of configuration application blueprints external services are explained in detail thank you for taking the time to watch this video we hope that it was informative to learn more about vcloud automation center there are additional videos available